save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we haven't reacted to Dr. Zucker Nike in a while. Today, with this video, Hindu asks, What about people accepting Islam but don't follow it later? And then he becomes Muslim. So apparently we're going to witness a live Shahada yet again. I would really like to know how many Shahadas Dr. Zakhar Naik has to his record. Anyways, guys, just do me the favor. If you enjoy my videos, leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. With no further ado, let's have a look. Non-Muslim, yes, brother. Come in the front. You can break the queue. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Good evening, my sir. My is, in this live session, I have seen nearly six to seven non-Muslim brothers, they are accepting this Shahada, right? In wow. front of you. And they have been, you have been making them to read the Shahada. Okay? Now they were accepting it. Dr. Zakhar Naik didn't make them take the Shahada. Ultimately, this up to God. They are getting into the Islam education school. Okay? Then after, they were not practicing. So what would be the final result? If they were accepting the Shahada, then after there is no practice. It means proper practice. So what would be the, the final result at the last day of judgment for them? Whether the Allah is going to punish them without practicing, you have just uh, in front of Jack and Nahak, you have uh, accepted the Islam's La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Are so this question may be Take raised, beer. I think so. Right? The brother asked a very good question. I think it's a very good question as well. Obviously, I'm not an Islamic scholar. However, I personally would not believe that it is enough to simply say the Shahada and treat it as your out of jail free card. I would believe that this is very hypocritical, of course. By accepting this message, you, of course, should dedicate your life to it. Otherwise, what's the point of accepting this message? If I accept there is only one God and after that I go to a Buddha statue and I kneel before it and worship Buddha, what is the point? And the same applies, of course for sinning as well why would i accept the message of one god and then after that just go about my day as if nothing happened so this question may be raised i think so right the brother asked a very good question that he has seen about seven or eight people accepting islam yeah i think there are seven or eight. First was four i think there were eight eight people who accepted islam yeah and they said the shahada what if they don't practice yeah. brother why are you being a pessimist be optimist what if they practice La ilaha illallah no. Muhammad Rasulullah. No, I am asking the question. Sorry? I am? That I am telling you. Okay. Why are you a pessimist? Pessimist means? Sorry? A pessimist. Do you know the meaning of pessimist? No, sorry. You just pessimist means a person who thinks negative. Okay. Why don't be an optimist? 
Okay. You should say, what if they practice Islam? Inshallah, they'll practice Islam. Okay. Coming to your question. What if someone takes the shahada in front of me? Taking shahada in the front of me is no benefit. Yeah. Whether you take in front of me, behind me, taking shahada is important. If you take in front of Dr. Zakir Naik, no extra marks. Okay. Dr. Zakir Naik, zero in Islam. Okay. Taking is important. Whether in front of me or in front of you, no problem. Point number one. Point number two, Good that answer. if they practice Islam, Inshallah, they'll go to Jannah, without doubt. What if they don't practice Islam? Chances are how much? Theory of probability, 50-50, correct? Okay, yeah. 50-50, na? Yeah, 50-50. Toss the coin, yes or no, 50-50. Hypothetically, they don't practice Islam. Okay. If they practice 50% Jannah. Yeah, 50% done. 50% Jannah also, Alhamdulillah. Better okay. than going to Jannah. Point okay. number one. I'm coming to your question, wait. Maximum, minimum chance is 50. So I'm telling, if this person doesn't take shada, if you don't take shada, okay. what will happen? Jannah. If you take 50%, 50% Jannah. You know the Quran says on the day of judgment, the non-Muslim will say, we would not mind giving you the full wealth of this world, give us Jannah. Jannah is more valuable than the full world. Yeah, I think this is, of course, a very optimistic perspective here. He says, hey, at least you have a 50-50% chance. If you don't take the Shahada, your chance is zero. I personally do not believe that. Yet again, disclaimer, I am not a scholar. This is my personal opinion. But by reading the Quran, I saw the verse that said, surely those who believe and those who are Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. So just by reading this verse, which, by the way, is extremely powerful, of course, you get the impression that no matter if you're a Jew or a Christian, you will get your reward as long as you do believe in one God and you're doing good deeds. And therefore, by this Quranic statement, you can, of course, come to the conclusion that this applies as well to Christians, etc. And if we extrapolate that thought and we go further, then we have to come to the conclusion that the Shahada itself is, of course, the very first step. Amazing. However, it is not the end all be all because the Quran itself says that the Christians and the Jews and the Sabians can get their reward as well. And this is really what it boils down to. If you decide to become a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, amazing. However, now the real work begins. At least this is how I see it. I truly believe that if I would have stayed within my own Christian tradition, however, believe in one God, worship God alone, do not commit shirk, I should have been able to get my reward, if you will. However, this was not enough for me because I saw the truth within Islam. And this is why I committed myself to Islam. And this is why, of course, I want to adhere to Islam. And we're talking about salvation here. We're talking about the soul. I'm not going to gamble away my soul. Hey, that's a 50% chance. Yeah, well, fantastic. We should talk about what it truly means to be a good Muslim. Correct. At yeah. least that's so how I see it. You're getting 50%. What a great deal. <laughs> right or wrong? Right. Great deal. If I tell you I'll give you a million dollar, <laughs> what do you stay awake full night? No? <laughs> million dollar, six crore rupees, seven crore. Yeah. What will you do? You'll stay awake full night? No? Yeah. So, this is much more than billions and trillions of dollars. Now, coming to your question. If the person practice Islam 50%, inshallah, go to Jannah. If he doesn't practice, if the person doesn't practice yet, if he does not do shirk, and if he believes there is one God, okay. and if he believes Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God yet, high chances he will go, but he will go late. Okay. If he doesn't practice well, he will go to hell first. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this doesn't go against the statement of the Quran either. As I just mentioned, ultimately, as long as you believe in one God and you do your good deeds, you should get your reward. Yet again. Physical punishment. But if he doesn't do shirk, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 48, and Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 116, if Allah wishes, he may forgive any sin, but the sin of shirk, he will never forgive. That means... If he accepts Islam, he drinks alcohol and he gambles and he cheats, maybe little days he'll go to hell, get some punishment. Maybe God will take him out and put him in hell after that. Other people who do shirk, 100% forever, 
in nar in hell yet it's a good deal right or wrong yeah right sir so do you believe there's one god yeah. <laughs> he is a do you sales man prophet muhammad is a messenger good deal no take yes? it yeah would you like to say the shahada but what says one you already did but you have to believe in it huh? yes, if sir. you say only to fool me wait wait, wait. okay if someone says okay allah mother rasulullah he doesn't believe god knows i will not know god knows of course then no janna okay you actually have to believe there's one god you actually have to believe idol worship is wrong see that's the reason a brother he said he wants to accept islam correct yeah. and then he said that i believe jesus is god i didn't give him shahada did you notice that yeah ah that means i'm not just counting <laughs> because he said no i believe jesus is god okay jesus is god that means you cannot become a muslim yes even if yeah that would be of course very inauthentic i even heard shahadas where christians were made to say there is no god but god and jesus is his messenger and muhammad is his messenger i believe that this is very important of course because you have to set everything straight before you taking the shahada the shahada should be a declaration of what you believe do you believe that prophet muhammad was a prophet Do you believe that there is only one God? If this is truly in your heart, you truly believe this, then you should say the shahada. Give me a million dollars, I will not give him shahada. Correct? Yeah. That means I'm not just I'm listening. Yeah. Now if someone cheats me and tells me a lie, Allah, Allah, I cannot go into his heart and check. Okay. And so you have to really believe there's one God. You have to believe that idol worship is wrong. You have to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Then, if you don't follow yet, there are chances you go to Jannah. Good bargain. There are many Muslims who are doing wrong things. Yes. But they are not good Muslims. Maybe they will never enter Jannah. I don't know Allah Wallam. But they can yet go. But if you die as a mushrik, if you die doing shirk, hundred percent hellfire. No option at all. And one more thing, sir. You have informed us just before the session. Uh, one of my <laughs> non-Muslim brother has uh, speak to you that you have asked the question him. In our Vedas, it was mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad will be coming back, right? So he had accepted that. Yes, I accept that. Our Vedas, uh, my our Vedas is accepting the thing. So you told that if you are accept the thing, it means that you are accepting that uh, Allah is one. It, it means the God is one, Correct. and the Muhammad Prophet is the one only messenger. Correct. So then after you have told that. If you are accepting the same thing, then I am and you are the same one. Correct. Right. Basic thing the same, Basic not totally. Thing, right. Correct. Okay. If we two are same, then what there is a difference between worshiping in that uh, in that way and worshiping ah, in this way? What is the difference? Very good question. Yeah, this is a really good question because it boils down to the verse that I just quoted. What if this man stays in his tradition? He stays a Hindu or whatever you want to call it. Even though Hinduism is an umbrella term, of course there are so many different branches. There is not one Hinduism. What if he believes in his Vedas? He believes in Prophet Muhammad. However, when it comes down to practicing. He doesn't want to, let's say, go to the mosque. He doesn't want to adhere to Ramadan. He doesn't want to adapt that religious aspect of Islam. He wants to stick with his own tradition. However, worship one God alone. What happens then? But they don't know Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the Veda, correct? Right. Okay. So actually, they are not practicing Hindus. The okay. many Christians say, "I love Jesus. I love Jesus more than them." I'm circumcised. They are not circumcised. Jesus said, "Don't have alcohol. Peace be upon you. Don't have alcohol. They have alcohol." The Bible says, "Don't have pork. I don't have pork. They have pork." I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. To play devil's advocate here, I can't find one passage where Jesus said you should not drink alcohol. Quite the opposite. If you read the Bible, he was serving wine. I love Jesus. Peace be upon him. They're all fake. And I'm not making a statement for alcohol. Don't get me wrong. I'm not drinking either. However, this argument is flawed. All fake. Right or wrong? Now, I told you I'm a Hindu. Yes. Hindu means coming from the land of Indus Valley. Geographical definition. Yes. Right or wrong? Right or right. Not a religious definition. Yeah. Religious definition is another term. Now, I tell them that why don't you believe your Veda? I don't agree. I don't agree everything of the Veda to be the word of God. But the Hindu believes. So I tell, let us agree what's coming. Quran says believe in one God. Veda says believe in one God. Quran says don't do idol worship. Veda says don't do idol worship. Quran says believe in Prophet Muhammad. Veda says let us agree. Now, previously you were a Hindu, not knowing that Veda says believe in Prophet Muhammad. Now you know. Now we are together in one part, main part. Okay. Now, once you say you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, 
You have to follow the message, right or wrong? Right. But if, one more thing. No, no. So when you believe in the message, what is the message? Again, to play devil's advocate here, I heard a Christian talk about this and he accepted Prophet Muhammad as a messenger. However, he believed in the covenant with the Jews, with the Christians and with the Muslims. And therefore, he didn't see the need to change an organized religion. He stayed within his own tradition, worships one God and does believe the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Good on. I don't know. Right. So indirectly, I'm telling them, your Veda is telling, come close to Quran. Your Bible is telling, come close to Quran. For sure. Right or wrong? Right. I'm not criticizing the Veda. I'm not criticizing. I can. I can give a lecture if my son gave for one or ten minutes similarities. I can give five hours on dissimilarities, differences. Okay. If I can give a lecture three hours on similarities in Islam and Hinduism, I can give five hours on differences between Islam and Hinduism. But I don't want to create fight. I love my Hindu brothers. I love my Christian brothers. Okay. That's the reason people hear my talk. And many of them accept. Some of them don't like me. Okay. But yet I love them. Yeah. So brother. Fine sir. The thing is, Right now, I can't uh, read this Shada because I am getting the teachings about the Quran from three months since I have been reading this Quran. Very good. With one of my colleagues, two of them are uh, right now, they are here. Hmm. So, I want to fulfill the total Quran, then after I will. Total Quran you cannot fulfill, brother. No, it means. No I, Muslim I can say, I, I follow 100%. Even I cannot say, I am a, I am a human being. The 100%. I am not saying that I see, want to once, fulfill Quran. See, I want one, to read it completely. I want yeah. to know every point. What it has been mentioned. Brother, how long will you live? How long? How long will you live? I can't tell you the uh, correct one. Suppose right? if I tell you, if I tell you there is a deal okay. of one million dollar, tell okay. me yes or no within one hour, what will you do? <laughs> what will you do? For life. You know, they let me do research for one month. One hour, yes or no, million dollar gone. What do you mean? This is not million dollars, this is trillion of dollars. Yeah, I personally really dislike this pressuring and I had it on my channel as well. Whilst researching Islam, I had so many comments every single day. Why don't you convert? You can die tomorrow, etc, etc. But those people do not know what's in your heart. There was a very good reason why I didn't accept Islam right away. I had to fully understand it. And yes, of course, you cannot fully understand it. However, completely enough for me personally to be firm in my decision. Because what's the point? The guy here himself asked, hey, how about those people that accept Islam and after that they're not practicing? If you're not practicing after that, you can fall off the faith. Wouldn't it be much more intelligent to be fully convinced first, absolutely convinced with your heart, with your mind, with your soul, then accept it and then stick to it? That of course makes much much more sense, don't you see? And this was the reason for me, because I jumped into all kinds of ideologies during my young life. Now I'm 35 years old. To commit to something for life, I need to understand it sufficiently. I need to be convinced completely. And this is why I personally believe that people should not be pressured to shahadas whatsoever, because there is a dropout rate in new reverts as well. And I heard that it's 50%. So 50% of people that took the Shahada actually leave Islam yet again. So what is the point in such a practice? The real motivation behind it should be to convey the message of Islam. And if they choose to convert, it's up to them. Okay. And see, you, I don't know how long will I live. I don't know if they'll go back to Bombay or not, correct? Yeah, right. Even you don't know. Once you're convinced, accept it. If yeah, you like you have to this be school, it's good you enter the school. You don't say, I'll do research. What research? By the time you grow old, you will not be able to enter the school. Correct? Then right. you have to go to university. By the three months. Three months. Took me two years. Without act, it means three months without nothing. any fulfillment about any... No, two, no, two fulfillment. No, no, no that, no, this not, two I'm not fulfillment speaking about of that type of fulfillment. Okay? Two you fulfillment have already informed, you just check with the Islam. What is the Islam? I want to understand what type, what was mentioned, what is there inside. See, once you accept in these two things, you do tell, you know 100 things about Islam. You follow 80 and don't follow 20, no problem. Okay, it's not a, it's not a problem for me. To yeah, reach well, out. maybe it's not a problem for you, but for me it would be a problem because if I commit to something, let's say I want to get married, right? And they tell you, hey, you see her? What are you thinking about? Take her, looks good, done deal, here, take her. For the rest of your life, right? 
So you saw her, she looks good. Can she cook? Does she clean? Is she of good character? You don't know anything about this woman other than that she looks good. She's a woman, she looks good. Hey, hey! And that's what Dr. Zucker Nike does here. Oh, you read a little bit of the Quran? Three months, brother, it's enough. Oh, it's enough. You believe in one God and idol worship is wrong. Done, done, finished. Of course not, because this man has to understand what Islam entails. And if he's not convinced about the other aspects of Islam, by him accepting and then not practicing those things, his faith will crumble. To the girl in Japan. That's really the case. Okay. To the girl in Japan, and she told me, Brother Zakir, I cannot give up pork. I said, well, I love it. Can you give up alcohol? She says, yes. She was wearing a scarf. I said, why wearing a scarf? No, my Muslim friend wear a scarf, I like it. Do you believe in one God? She said, yes. Do you believe in Prophet Muhammad? She said, yes. I said, give the shahada, continue eating pork. People were shocked. I said, maybe after two weeks you'll stop. Maybe after two months you'll stop. Maybe after two years you stop. Even if she doesn't stop, yet she can go to Jannah or not. There are many Muslims who are having alcohol. Drinking alcohol is a bigger sin than having pork, right or wrong? This is hikmah. At least the shirk is not there in her life. I will not say no, no, unless you don't have, unless you don't stop eating pork, you can't give the shada. Fool. Right or wrong? Right. Yeah, I do understand the point. However, in Islam, you don't eat pork. You don't drink alcohol. So therefore, when you are drinking alcohol, God forbid, at least you know that you are committing a sin. If you would have pork, you would be committing a sin if it is not out of survival. But this woman is clearly not there. She simply wears the scarf because she likes it, but she loves pork. She doesn't see anything wrong with it. And of course, she has to understand what is wrong about it and that it is wrong indeed otherwise she will just keep on eating pork without understanding that she is sinning what research you want to do yes get convinced he's very optimistic yeah, huh? but one more thing yeah, uh, but, yeah but lake in but is a big question yes brother i see what hai sanatana dharm ke bare mein janna hai mere ko no no problem i want to know what the thing is as per quran 1400 years since it means the Quran was in existence. Yes. So what about the Sanatana Dharma? What Sanatana Dharma what? according to Swami Vivekananda, the present Vedas that you have is a very small percentage. Most of the Vedas have been lost. Okay. They do not know when exactly the Veda came into existence. Okay. Who did it come to? Yet they believe it is the word of God. Most okay. of the scholars say the Vedas is 4000 years old. But according to Swami Dhyan and Saraswati, he said the Veda is 1310 million years old. Oh, wow. 1310 million years old. But most of the scholars say 4000. Now when you do research, you come to know, yet today it is not there in the pure form. There is no book on the face of the earth which is in 100% pure form besides the Quran. Okay. You put it to the test of science. I mean, All maybe a religious book, right? Again, to play devil's advocate here, of course, we have plenty of books nowadays that are still in their original form. They're just not that old. The scripture I know, fail. nobody you likes a wise ass. You put the Bible to the test of science, it will fail miserably. You put the Veda to the test of science, it will fail. Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth, which is yet there in its pure form for the last 40 years. Religious book, yeah, for sure. But what was your opinion regarding this? It means how many years it was the existence, Sanatan Dharam. Sanatan Dharam, I lead from the scholars of Hinduism. No, it they was differ. the right thing, but you have a slight knowledge. Yes. Because why I was asking this question yes. is... Sanatan Dharam is closer to Islam than the other Hinduism. Yeah. Sanatan Dharam is much more closer to Islam. It's a more pure form of Hinduism than the other religion. Other sect, sorry. Because, I agree with you. Because that, uh, why I raised this question is, if you go with India, most of the them you will be having Hindus, okay? Muslim yes. percentage is less compared yes. to Hindus. Yes. If Very low, yeah. the Sanatan Dham is having large extens existence, then this uh, uh, Islam, it may be, I think this would be the oldest one. If that is your logic in that the world, the if that asking. is your logic in the yeah. world, there are more Muslims or Hindus. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is also anyway, design, in Islam, majority doesn't win. In Islam, majority doesn't win. 
suppose I am alone Muslim and if there are thousand Hindus around me, that doesn't mean they are right. No, this no. is a wrong logic. Quran says in Surah Isra chapter number Yeah, this is called an appeal to majority fallacy. Of course, if everybody says it's right, therefore it must be true. Obviously not. If we look into the past few years, we saw many people that had certain opinions that were certainly not true. In verse number 81, it's mentioned in the Quran, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْوَذَاكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلِ قَانَ زَوْكَ When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. So never does it mean that majority wins. Majority is not right, what is Haq is correct. Yes. You understand? So this logic that majority wins, it will benefit me. Because there are more Muslims in the world than you. And you are living in Qatar. In Qatar also there are more Muslims, correct? Yeah. In Islam, majority doesn't win. You check it with reason. Check it with logic. Check it with your heart and you will come to know which is true. Sure. Okay, thank you. So yet you are not prepared. <laughs> the moment already when I started, I have read the Kalma. Sorry? The moment when I have started... I know, I know Quran. you said the Kalma, but maybe you said it just for reading. See, okay, one no. is saying with conviction, one is just reading and you read it. If you read it, I know you read it. One is with conviction, yes, believing there's one God, believing Prophet Muhammad. That is the real thing. Reading like that Kalma, is, you read very fast. Okay, I'm ready to read. Okay, okay. mashallah. You believe there's one God? Yeah. Okay. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yeah. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing out of your own Just free will? Just pressuring no. a little bit. <laughs> Are you doing out of your own free will? Sorry? Are you doing it out of your own free will? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abuhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That there is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, we become Muslim and I pray to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make you strong. Brother, I pray to Allah that may he make you strong. And I, inshallah I feel you will be amongst the strongest. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Because you know, if it's difficult, it's strong. And I pray to Allah that may He make you guide other people to the truth. May you go to Jannah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Alright, and this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, so I'm gonna cut it off here. I said pretty much everything throughout the video. I'm not a fan of pressuring people into shahadas. I really hope that he was sincere in the end. Yes, the main belief is there that you believe in one God and that the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. However, you need to confirm for yourself that you understand what Islam entails and what it is about. If you, for example, are a pig farmer and you just love eating pork and you think it's absolutely right and you cannot accept that it is wrong or you think circumcision is absolutely wrong or you think that drinking alcohol is absolutely right etc etc then you are in conflict with Islam and I would say then please take your time it is good that you believe in one God and God knows that it is good that you believe that Prophet Muhammad was a messenger however then you would have to understand what it entails that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger and what kind of Sharia he really brought. And this is why I, out of personal experience, would say, take your time. You have to be firmly convinced, 100%. Only through firm conviction, you can stick with something. Because you will always remember why you chose it in the first place. Yet again, if you choose your wife just because somebody said, oh, she's pretty, you're not going to be so committed to her. However, if you choose your wife and you know why you chose her, no matter what kind of hardship you go through, you will always think back and remember why you chose her in the first place. There was something that convinced you in the first place. And no matter how rough the times, you can always think back. And if we're thinking about religion, if we're thinking about Islam, you can always think back to your firm conviction why you chose Islam, even in time of little faith if your imam is not that strong and we will all have battles as such 
during that time, you can always remember, this is why I chose Islam. And this is so powerful for reverts, because many Muslims are born into the religion, of course. But we as reverts, we have this absolute precious gift of choosing Islam. Then we can always remember, I chose it myself. I know why I chose it, even though now in this stage, I might feel differently. But this is why I chose it. Only with firm conviction, you can dedicate yourself for life. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.